Good morning. Dear delegates of Turkey and Moscow International Model United Nations 2020, dear friends, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you from the UN Association of Russia, Mgimo University. As you are aware, it's the first ever online model United Nations that we launched during the spring 2020 because of epidemic of COVID-19. And uh, you know that uh, we had already three sessions for to prepare this main our model Moscow United Nations. That's why for me it's a pleasure that all together we are now here online, but even taking participants as in online format, we are very active and sure that you will be with us during these days. And the first, let me, I have a special pleasure and honor to give the floor to the chairman of the United Nations Association of Russia, rector of Gimo University, academician Anatoly Tarkunov. The floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Berisha. Dear delegates, dear friends, dear participants and observers of the model of the United Nations, international children model of the United Nations, I'm happy to welcome you. And uh, I should admit that in recent years, civil society organizations have been playing an increasingly important role in the United Nations activities. And no doubt the trend will gain momentum. Model United Nations, the unique workshops providing training in multilateral diplomacy, contribute a lot of, to promoting interest among the young people in the modern issues of international relations and international security. Facilitating better understanding of international relations and international cooperation, the United Nations Model Conferences introduce youngsters as you to the United Nations activities promote awareness of the United Nations principles and the ideals of peace, mutual respect and understanding among peoples. Uh, United Nations model spread to many countries during the globalization era. Its evolution into international programs was to a large extent facilitated the development and the rapid global expansion of the modern means of communication. Today, Europe hosts over 40 official uh, models, while the United States boasts more than 160. The Turkey Moscow International Model United Nations is one of the most popular and prestigious conferences of this kind across the world. The highly professional work of its committees earned uh, it the reputation of one of the best model United Nations in Europe. In recent years, the conferences have had over 600 participants with the number of applicants twice as high. National United Nations uh, associations that see model United Nations as an effective tool of raising awareness about the United Nations and engaging future young leaders in its work have contributed greatly to enhancing the international United Nations model community. Openness has come to be one of the key features of the established UN model. Uh, model has proved to be an excellent school of leadership so successful participation in a model requires relentless and serious work. It is therefore natural that the United Nations models attract the most proactive, resourceful and talented students with the first for knowledge. Uh, I, I should admit that uh, benefits highly motivated young people and uh, People are not the only one uh, keen on uh, United Nations model. Public officials in many countries also take a profound interest in a uh, model for the conferences that simulate the work of various United Nations 
Boris promote the ideas of contemporary multipolar world, which is commanded by the governments of many states. Uh, I should admit that the current young uh, generation will be directly involved in the United Nations activities, participating in, in uh, uh, our models, and therefore learning to cooperate in broad international environment. Uh, modern youth is getting ready for the world. It is bound to be entrusted with in the near future. I, I should inform you, dear friends, with great pleasure that we, we just have received the message from the president of the Russian Federation. In this uh, message, uh, the president welcomes all participants of the events devoted to the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. I, I will cite a few parts of uh, this message, which uh, will be published in our uh, site today. The president is uh, saying, the United Nations uh, aims and strengthening universal peace and security, contributing to political diplomatic settlement of crisis, ensuring sustainable socioeconomic development and protection of human rights. Being uh, one of the founding members of the United Nations, Russia actively supports the activities of the organization, consistently promotes consolidation of its central coordinating role in the international affairs, advocates for the strict adherence to the norms and principles of the United Nations Charter. We proceed from the premise that the United Nations has been and remains a global structure which has no alternatives, providing for equitable multilateral dialogue and partnership in solving a wide range of uh, problems faced by the humanity. The 75th anniversary of the United Nations is celebrated under the slogan, shaping our future together. Beyond any doubt, only by working together, we will be able to meet the global challenges of the 21st century and ensure peaceful thriving of the humanity effectively. I, I wish you all the best, Vladimir Putin. Dear friends, I also wish you all the best. I wish you the success. I wish the success for the United Nations model. And uh, I, I want to uh, wish you just take care of yourself in this uh, very serious and dangerous time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Barista. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Torkunov. And we are very thankful to you personally because of your help for this project during for 30, more than 30 years in Russia and Gimo University in the regions of Russia. And because of your personal uh, support, uh, many young leaders can raise their awareness and practical experience in the international activities and uh, they were prepared well for the, for the future careers of them in the business, international organizations, and others. And uh, we have uh, today our friend with us, uh, the chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee of the Federal Council, our friend, Mr. Konstantin Kazachev. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Do you hear me? Good. Uh, dear friends, uh, colleagues, I would like to call you all colleagues because we are colleagues today here. Uh, I am sincerely happy to have this opportunity to, to, to this opportunity to address the Turk and Moscow International Model United Nations. Although uh, such meetings uh, have become traditional and are held on an annual basis, the one of this year it is not just unusual in terms of its online format, but with no doubt highly prompt and timely. Why? Because the world is definitely in a big transformation, changing before our eyes. All threats such as arms race, proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, inter-ethnic conflicts have not been defeated, 
but simultaneously more and more new threats are added to them. Cross-border terrorism, cybercrime, information wars, and last but not least, climate change and pandemics. And there is one more trend or tendency, namely the shrinking role of relevant international instruments, such as multilateral organizations and legally binding agreements. And uh, if the first story, old and new threats, is in many senses a non-state phenomenon in nature, the second one, I mean the role of international institutions, depends solely on good or bad will of states. Margaret Thatcher once said that member states criticizing the United Nation, Nations should look in the mirror because the United Nations is a reflection of us. The effectiveness of the United Nations depends and is derived from us and our will. And if this is true, then it's neither the principles of the United Nations, United Nations functioning, including the principles of unanimity in the Security Council, that reduce its effectiveness, but actions outside the United Nations Security Council without a mandate, without coordination. In this sense, five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council have a special responsibility. It is in this context that the initiative announced by President Vladimir Putin to organize a meeting of five heads of state, uh, which are in the Security Council, should be understood and uh, supported. And in the same context, it's very disturbing that one of the five powers, one of the five permanent members of the Security Council, namely the United States of America, only in recent years withdrew from UNESCO, the United Nations Human Rights Council, and the World Health Organization. They also withdrew from the five-sided mechanism on the Iranian nuclear deal. More than that, in June this year, the United States president issued a presidential decree imposing sanctions against the judges of the International Criminal Court. This is all very alarming. I would cite in this context a historic fact. In 1945, the Soviet foreign minister Molotov wrote a note to the Politburo of the Soviet Union Communist Party on the establishment of the United Nations, proposing Vienna as the seat of the central authorities of this organization. On this paper, Comrade Stalin wrote that Vienna is not suitable and the headquarters should be located in New York. Why? In order to better link the United States of America to the New World Community, I cite, in particular to the United Nations, in order to jointly perform the tasks outlined in the charter of the organization. I would say that there is a similar task nowadays. The United Nations need the United States of America, while the United States objectively needs the United Nations as undermining the, th the authority of the main international organization will lead only to the growing chaos and provoke new threats. These days, another anniversary associated with the United Nations is being commemorated. On October the 12th of 1960, Nikita Khrushchev spoke at the 15th session of the United Nations General Assembly. And the world remembered this speech with footage of uh, Khrushchev's shoes in his hand. But in this regard, I would quote a man whom I consider my mentor and who is a recognized authority in diplomacy and policy, namely Evgeny Primakov, who once said, I do not agree that a serious policy is to knock on the table with a fist. It's the sign of a great power when your country is needed. They want to deal with it. Russia is a great power precisely because many problems in the international arena cannot be solved without Russia. Quote, unquote. I believe that this is the only pattern of a responsible behavior of world powers to be sources of solutions, not problems, not sanctions, but dialogue, not conflicts, but agreements. And as long as the peoples of the world have the will and desire to endorse dialogue 
and collective solutions of common problems, the United Nations will not just be necessary, but stay as the only option. This is what we in Russia believe in. This is what most of other peoples expect from us, politicians of today, expect of uh, the United Nations. And this is what more and more depends on you, dear participants of the model. And wish, I wish you all good luck in your common work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, uh, dear Mr. Kosachev. Thank you for your historical, very imp interesting historical remarks. As you are aware, UN Association of Russia is, has a, uh, 65 years of activities here in Russia. And during these years, uh, many interesting projects was realized with, together uh, with our colleagues in academia, in Ministry of Foreign Affairs, it was a representation of international organization. You already uh, remind us about uh, Evgeny Primakov, who was chairman of the UN Association of Russia before Anatoly Torkunov. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, many prominent diplomats participated in our activity at the Model UN project. Uh, and uh, you know that our Moscow International Model United Nations named by Vitaly Ambassador Vitaly Churkin in 2017 by the decision of uh, Minister Lavrov and Chairman Torkunov. So many interesting uh, historical events were connected to the UN Association of Russia here. And now I'm uh, very pleased to give the floor to our friend, long-term partner, uh, director of the in United Nations Informational Center in Moscow, Mr. Vladimir Kuznetsov. Distinguished Ambassador Anatoly Turkunov, distinguished Chairman Konstantin Kosachev, dear friends and participants, it gives me great pleasure to greet all of you today. The Mgimo University Model UN, which is named after a prominent diplomat, Russian diplomat, and my senior friend, uh, Vitaly Churkin, who passed three years ago, traditionally brings together hundreds of students, students from Russia and beyond. We at the United Nations are really satisfied with the fact that despite the restrictions imposed by COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the Russian youth, are actively joining the UN 75 dialogues. And your GIMO model session is definitely one of such UN 75 events. We gather as COVID-19 continues to wreak havoc across the globe. The human, human crisis caused by COVID-19 pandemic is a reminder of the need to move faster and farther to achieve the sustainable development goals. Now is the time for stronger coordination for governments and societies to come together to respond to the devastating impact of the virus and recover better. This pandemic has put a spotlight on the need to strengthen multilateral cooperation, international instruments, governance, and above our global solidarity. Despite being disproportionately impacted by COVID-19, young people around the world continue to demonstrate immense resilience, resourcefulness, and leadership in finding innovative solutions to recover better and achieve the SDGs. They are young people who have risen up to demand climate action. They are mobilizing for radical justice, racial justice, and gender equality, and other champions of a more sustainable world. They are peace builders, promoting social cohesion at the time of social distancing, advancing an end to violence globally, and advocating harmony at a time of rising hatred. Many are young women who have been on the front lines in mobilizing for justice and climate action, including COVID-19 response. The crisis 
uh, is having a huge impact on young people mentally and physically. According to uh, UNESCO, more than 90% of the world's students are impacted by the closure of facilities. Prior to the pandemic, the World Bank estimated that in developing countries, an extra 600 million jobs would be needed by uh, 2030 to keep pace with population growth. Job prospects are even more uncertain. Now is the time to end business as usual. Now is the time to put into practice the commitment to future generations that is central to the Charter of the United Nations. And to make progress on the United Nations we need for the future we want, as envisaged in the Sustainable Development Goals. That is the spirit in which the United Nations 75th anniversary was conceived by the Secretary General last year and supported by the member states, not as a celebration, but as a moment of reflection, of listening, of coming together as a human family to discuss how we can overcome the big trends shaping our future. From the rapid changes in the make makeup of our population to popular discontent in many parts of the world. The United Nations system remains fully to support governments and ensure that lives are saved, livelihoods are restored, financial resources are mobilized, and that the global economy and the people can emerge stronger from this crisis. As the Secretary General has put it, we must continue to step up cooperation in core areas where our impact is the greatest climate change, economic transformation and employment, rooting out poverty and leaving no one behind. Partnerships, including South-South cooperation, will also be pivotal as will support two countries in special situations, including those experiencing fragility and crisis. Finally, may I add that I'm sure that this outline, Shurkin Model UN at Themgimo University, will go a long way towards helping its participants to realize to the fullest extent of their great potential. I wish you all the success in this noble endeavor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Vladimir Kuznetsov, director of the Unique in Moscow, United Nations Information Center in Moscow, for your message. And uh, we are very thankful to you for our cooperation as together with your information center, the UN Association of Russia, we promote the high values and ideas of the United Nations around the world and in Russia particular and about Russian very active Russian participation and the UN activity globally. And uh, now it's my pleasure, it's my honor to give the floor to the Director of the Department of International Organizations of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia, Mr. Pyotr Ilichov. Dear colleagues, it's my pleasure to warmly welcome you as guests and participants of the Vitaly Churkin Moscow International Model UN. I would like also to express my gratitude to the United Nations Association of Russia and the Moscow State Institute for International Relations for organizing this event, which provides students from all over the world with a unique opportunity to expand their knowledge of the organization's activities and to develop the skills that are necessary for subsequent work in the UN system. This year, the Moscow International Model UN is dedicated to the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. In this regard, it's of utmost importance to refer to another milestone that is closely linked with the creation of the UN, the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War. 75 years ago, the Allies, determined to avoid another devastating global tragedy, laid the foundations of a new world order based on respect for the legitimate interests and aspirations of all states and peoples. Throughout his, its history, the United Nations has served as the cornerstone of the post-war architecture of international relations. More specifically, the UN was designed to maintain peace and security worldwide, 
to develop friendly relations among nations, to promote cooperation in solving various global problems, and to encourage respect for human rights. However, its main purpose, to quote the UN Charter, was to save the succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to mankind." End of quote. Despite the numerous obstacles in the, its way, the United Nations has succeeded in fulfilling its primary responsibility and preventing a third world war. Nonetheless, the world is again going through increasing tough times. We are witnessing armed conflicts raging unabated all over the planet. Increased interdependence between states and the rise of non-state actors result in the emergence of new cross-border threats. The universally recognized norms of international law are coming under attack by those eager to undermine the multi-power system and restore their dominance in international affairs. The outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic, which has affected each and every region of the world, is yet another acute global challenge that humanity is currently facing. Dear colleagues, I am deeply convinced that the search for effective solutions to the most pressing contemporary issues requires enhanced international cooperation based on democratic principles. In our globalized world, it's clear that pursuing narrow geopolitical interests, applying illegal unilateral coercive measures, and politicizing human rights are all step in the wrong direction. Against this backdrop, what we primarily need is to strengthen the current central coordinating role of the UN as the bedrock of genuine multilateralism. Russia, being one of the founding members of the organization and a permanent member of its Security Council, has consistently advocated strict compliance with the principles and purposes of the UN Charter and played a constructive role in adapting the organization to the complexities of our age. It's our firm belief that the United Nations remains an indispensable framework for a fair and equitable dialogue aimed at overcoming today's myriad problems. Dear colleagues, I wish you all successful and fruitful work and sincerely hope that you will soon form a new generation either of diplomats or UN officials committed to making this world better for everyone. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Pyotr Ilyichov. Uh, we are very glad that we have effective cooperation with your Department of Ministry of Affairs, Department of International Organization, and uh, we are ready to cooperate for future. And uh, you, know, you know that many uh, participants of Model United Nations uh, started to move to the Ministry of to work the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the International Organization. That's why it's a very interesting project to work together to uh, educate and to prepare future leaders and future diplomats in the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and in the, the international organizations. Thank you a lot for your support. And uh, now it's my pleasure to give the floor to also our friend, uh, uh, Chairman of the State Duma Committee on International Re Relations. Uh, he is also, as a person, supporting this uh, project of Moscow International Model United, United Nations made by Vitaly Churkin uh, in a real means. Uh, and it's why my pleasure to give the floor to Mr. Leonid Slutsky. Дорогие друзья, добрый день! От имени Комитета Государственной Думы по международным делам и Российского фонда мира ряд приветствовать участников Московской международной модели ООН имени Виталия Чуркина. В этом году мы отмечаем 75-летие создания Организации Объединенных Наций. Я имею честь быть членом российской делегации на этой юбилейной сессии Генеральной Ассамблеи ООН. ООН доказала свою безальтернативность как организация, которая, по сути дела, является главенствующей в мировой архитектуре. Призываю вас со всей полнотой ответственности подойти к своей работе на площадке московской модели ООН. Конечно, вы хорошо знаете, что в нынешнем году ключевым вызовом для человечества стала пандемия 
Новой коронавирусной инфекции COVID-19. Многие страны были вынуждены ввести специальные меры для сдерживания болезни. Сегодня мир вынужден работать с последствиями пандемии. И крайне важен взгляд на эту важнейшую, актуальнейшую и сложнейшую проблему молодого поколения. Уверен, вы, дорогие друзья, коллеги, уделите этой теме серьезное внимание. Но при этом необходимо соблюдать объективность, нельзя допускать излишней политизации этой темы. Речь идет в первую очередь о жизнях людей. Мы видим, что отдельные политики или общественные организации в разных странах используют пандемию, к великому сожалению, в качестве инструмента политических технологий для решения своих задач. Это недопустимо, и вы как будущие дипломаты, по крайней мере, многие из вас это хорошо понимаете. Ну и что касается необычного формата модели ООН в этом году, даже упомянутая мной юбилейная сессия Генассамблеи Организации Объединенных Наций работает в режиме видеоконференц-связи. Уверен, что этот необычный формат онлайн станет для многих из вас хорошим профессиональным опытом. Один из важных навыков дипломата – умение адаптироваться к нестандартным обстоятельствам работы. Желаю вам, дорогие друзья, дорогие коллеги, плодотворной, интересной, эффективной работы. Ваше видение актуальной международной повестки дня, ваше представление о работе Организации Объединенных Наций сегодня имеют для всех нас очень большое значение. Успех вам, дорогие друзья. Thank you, dear Mr. Leonid Slutsky, and thank you again for your personal support to the project of Moscow International model United Nations, and you, as you are aware, it was uh, more than 1,000 application to participate at our model UN, and uh, 750 uh, were selected. Uh, there are still 13 committees in all six languages of the United Nations that the model is operates. Uh, uh, the Secretariat that prepared this model United Nations consists, despite of the online format, consists of more than 100 people from universities and schools from all over the Russia, and uh, plus Moscow model United Nations ambassadors who are promoting the model movement in the country and abroad. Uh, this time we have uh, around 500 Russian citizens participate, delegates participate in, in the model United Nations and 250 from abroad. Uh, you know, it's a serious work of the Secretariat and Moscow model United Nations ambassadors to prepare this event. And that's why uh, it will be my pleasure and now the pleasure to give the floor to the coordinator of the Churkin Moscow International Model United Nations, Mr. Akop Tarasyan. And most important person today, the Secretary General, the Secretary General of the Churkin Moscow International Model United Nations, Mr. Nikita Smolyaninov. So the, the floor for you, and uh, that's why I'm leaving the post today, so you can run, and you are the chiefs today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all our prominent guests, friends. Thank you for your participation. Uh, looking forward to cooperate with you in the future. Thank you a lot. The floor is yours. Thank Unfortunately, we have to adjust to the COVID reality and, well, sit in masks, but still, just for the time of my speech, I'd like to take it off so that you can hear me well. Honorable delegates, honorable guests, I should admit it has been quite a long journey, a tiresome and very long. It lasted more than one year. And, well, finally, here we are. We have finally reached our destination, our model United Nations Week. Do you feel excited? I believe you do. It always feels like that when you get something that you have desired so much, something that has been awaited so much. This year has seen um, increasingly shocking and, well, frustrating events. 
and some of them has undoubtedly changed our reality. And one of our ultimate goals was to adjust to these changes. And I suppose that my team has succeeded in doing that. And uh, whatever happened uh, during this year, we never hesitated. We never gave up. And I suppose that's one of the main messages. You should never give up. Whatever challenges, whatever troubles, whatever problems, whatever obstacles you, you may face during your path, never surrender. Always strive for your goal, whatever happens, and you will achieve that. And I suppose that my team is a permanent evidence of that. Dear delegates, dear friends, as we have nearly arrived at our final destination, I would like to wish you a truly joyful, um, well, memorable and, well, fruitful week of debates, of cultural events, of our social program, of meeting new friends, new people. I wish you good luck during this week. As you have might understood by now, I'm trying to build up to the most important moment of this ceremony. And now, I have my pleasure and honor to declare Moscow Churkin, uh, Churkin Moscow International Model United Nations 2020 open. My congratulations to you, friends and colleagues. Thank you.